I've been self-employed for 22 or 42 years and I was a commercial landscape contractor to begin with and that's what gave us my introduction into native vegetation was wetland mitigation incorporated in some of the new buildings being built throughout Indiana. In order to be able to develop the market broader, we began developing a series of best management practices that the architects and engineers could weave native grasses and plants in their commercial landscape designs so that we have the benefits of native vegetation for pollinator habitat, cleaning up the pollutants out of the water. And so some of those 401 laws regard the site water has to be a certain amount of pollutant free as well as um, silt free and sedge meadow communities and wetlands do both those functions. So once the architects and engineers started incorporating this kind of vegetation in their um, various installations, then the industry exploded. So we're known throughout the Midwest for those um, best management practices in, that they can find on our website and it's downloaded in a format that they're comfortable with using. So you see how that helped create the momentum that we have now in the use of native grasses and wildflowers. Now, in the beginning, I knew very little about this except what I was exposed to. So I was very fortunate to have people come along and it seemed like anything I was doing with native vegetation, when I needed it, it showed up on my doorstep. Kevin Tungusvik showed up. He is the expert on native vegetation here in the Midwest. And he worked for us for a number of years and helped get these various applications put together and get them on the internet. And we hosted bus trips for a number of years that showed what it looked like in year one, two, and three so the architects and engineers could convey that to their potential clients. That worked out rather well because we can see along America's or Indiana's roadsides that we have native vegetation applications. And Hamilton Southeast School Districts were readily embrace um, site water detention in sedge meadows in their detention ponds instead of solid cattails. So as you drive down Oleo Road in Indianapolis or 146th Street, you'll see native vegetation applications in the site water detention and in the waterways and in common areas uh, to reduce their maintenance costs. In the 90s, I was still a commercial landscape contractor, but we'd done several wetland mitigations for infrastructure improvements, as well as new building, or say a new housing addition. And as that industry grew, we stepped away from being an installer to now incorporating Spence Restoration Nurseries and only began production of 180 different native grasses and wildflowers that you see here in production on 300 acres today. The original collections, Kevin Tungusvik and myself would go on various properties, some of which we'd arranged with the property owners, some were the linear uh, prairies of the railroads that everybody's familiar with in the nest, northwest part of the state. This whole idea that we can have native grass and wildflower installations to meet functions like habitat for pollinators, which is so important in today's age when farmers have to be more and more mechanized to be at a scale that they can, can compete on the world market. So now it's up to the rest of the public to come about wherever we have common areas to use these opportunities for native um, grass and forbs to support the pollinators. Kevin and myself worked with the local biologist and botanist from the farm program and got that a slow conversion into native vegetation. So now they have several best management practices uh, available to farm community or landowners to be able to use native vegetation for any number of reasons. Uh, today, in fact, they're collecting stiff goldenrod and Aster azurius, a sky blue aster. Um, we also have Riddell's goldenrod, 
Aster Panisius, which is swamp goldenrod, and uh, mountain mint, and yellow coneflower, purple coneflower, obviously. Uh, some of the oddities that we've had over the years that we maintain an inventory of, even though there's really not a demand for it, is uh, like Hypericum pyramidatum, a very tall Hypericum that's every bit eight and 10 feet tall. That's pretty neat stuff. You can't find that anywhere.